Thank you everyone for joining us today for Entrust IDAS webinar, Identity as a Service. Uh, you know me, I'm, I'm a product manager at Soft Solutions and from Entrust we have got uh, Uli, who is senior sales executive and we have got Louis, who is technical sales consultant. So Uli is going to walk us through uh, give us an overview about the Entrust and iDash and then Louis is going to give us a bit of demonstration on how iDash looks like and how it works. We have a pretty straightforward agenda today so I'm you know quickly gonna share some cybersecurity stats not to scare you or anything like that but just to show you know what's what's out there in New Zealand what's currently happening in New Zealand and then um, Yuli We'll start off with that with an overview of interest and in iDash. I'm sure you already know us, uh, otherwise you wouldn't have joined this webinar. But anyways, uh, we Soft Solution established in 1995. We are the New Zealand distributor for computer products specializing in challenger solutions. So when I say challenger solutions, you have you, you haven't seen us distributing Lenovo's and HP's and that kind of thing, but we usually distribute the solutions that can add value for our reseller partners who can add further value to their customers, like you know uh, infrastructure management solutions, um, you know security management solutions, those kind of solutions. And we always looking for vendors who have you know partnership with the vendors who who have got fantastic solutions, especially in the MSP space where our MSPs, New Zealand MSPs can leverage those solutions to add value to their customers organization. Uh, now, we always wonder that, you know, uh, security budget have gone up. There are multiple tools available in the market. So ideally, the number of breaches should go down, isn't it? But it's not happening. It's it's the other way. The number of breaches are continuously rising, and I guess I guess one of the reason for that is the way New Zealand businesses used to operate. Now, when I when I used to look after manage engine, I used to you know catch up with so many end customers, you know business owners and SMBs and IT managers and CTOs and CIOs in mid market and enterprise space. And whenever I used to ask them, what's what's your IT security roadmap? answers used to be negative most of the time and you know the reason is key as, as kiwis like you know we we always like to do best in customer service you know we we believe in great customer service and same thing in the it majority of the it budget used to get spent on customer facing and customer service tools like crm and service desk etc etc and um in the security side you know there was hardly any investment but thanks to covid because covid have helped in shifting the paradigm now we can see that more business owners wanting to invest more and more in security end um, however there are so many security vendors out there you know whose, whose solutions are, are usually expensive but knowing the fact that new zealand market is quite price sensitive isn't it like you know hundred thousand dollars is not a lot of money in in australian market or even united states market but that's a lot of money in new zealand market and hence as a soft solution team we are always looking for partner partnering up with the windows who has got great solution a uh, that can be helpful to msps b and the products are at the right price point and that's why we were introduced to interest by our parent company blue chip late last year and we partnered up with interest i'm not going to talk uh, too much about interest because uh, i'm going to leave that with uh, yuli to introduce interest but late last year we partnered up with them we did a great launch event we went for a movie night and since then we have been talking about interest to all our reseller partners in new zealand now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass it to yuli who will be able to share the screen to start the overview on interest and i dash
Over to you, Uli. Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you see my screen? Yes. Excellent. So you can see the interest identity screen. Yep. So welcome everyone. And Drew, thanks a lot for letting us present here together with you. I think it's a great partnership that we've got with Soft Solution. As Drew said, it's fairly new. And we're very keen to extend our offering through Soft Solutions into the New Zealand market. I'm going to give a quick overview of Entrust itself. Really only just touch upon the IDAS offering and then I'll hand over to my colleague Louis, who's going to give an in-depth demo and have uh, some more detailed insights into the product itself. So quickly about Entrust. Oops, hang on, wrong screen. Um, to give you a bit of a feel for the size of the organisation, there are there are a few numbers up here. You can read through them yourself. So we've obviously um, over the years, and I'll get into that history on the next page. Uh, established quite a presence globally and you can see by some of the numbers below very very active in some very big accounts as well now that doesn't mean to say that we don't work with smaller accounts and that's one of the reasons why we have partnered with soft solutions because they are our channel to the smaller accounts Next slide. A, a bit of history itself. So some of you may know that Entrust started as data card, doing physical ID printers back in 1969, desktop printers and big bureau pieces of equipment. So since our early days, we have been focused on securing identities. And as the progression towards digital has commenced we've gone with it and we've adapted our portfolio to the digital space it started that digital journey back in 2013 when we acquired Entrust. for a period of time the company was called Entrust data card and in 2020 was rebranded to be just Entrust. since that acquisition of Entrust, there have been various acquisitions along the way all in the digital space to enhance our offering in the digital area, in the certificate area, and predominantly the PKI area. There have been some further enhancements in the identity space where we've acquired recently Worldreach, who help us in the onboarding of customers and making sure they are who they say they are. Now, when it comes to IDAS itself, that's obviously technically part of it, but we're going to focus on integrating to existing onboarded customers as opposed to onboarding these customers themselves. In terms of our portfolio today, we have a range of physical products and digital products all focused around security. We are lately offering these as a service, so identity as a service. We've got HSM as a service. When we say HSM as a service, it technically is a physical HSM, but we basically put that HSM into the cloud and give our customers access to it. And you don't have the worry of having to maintain and own it. You can still fully control it, but the, it sits in the cloud. Along with a lot of our other solutions and product offerings, there are a lot of organizations, as you'd be aware, that have this as their preferred approach. The same applies for our identity as a service that sits in the cloud, but the 
important thing on that is that we can run it as a hybrid solution. We know that there are customers out there who still have a lot of on-prem servers and components. And if, for example, you're one of those, you can have our virtual machines on your own ESX hosts on your prem and they can connect seamlessly to our cloud service. If you have everything in the cloud, then obviously you can run our identity as a service purely within the cloud. There's a lot of focus obviously around internet of things, which is coming very, very strongly. And if you look at some of those breaches that we've had about APIs, technically an API breach is just a computer talking to a computer and obviously unsecured interfaces. And there are solutions out there to prevent those breaches from happening. Drew's touched on it briefly that we've got a few new challenges at the moment in the marketplace, predominantly driven by some of the uh, events in the past two years, COVID and the like. And as a result of that, we have that distributed workforce that we have to cater for. I briefly touched on it as well, that a lot of organizations are moving to the cloud. Some are fully cloud already. I was speaking to a payments provider, an ASX listed payments provider the other day, and they've basically got everything in the cloud, nothing at all on-prem. And then you've got a lot of organizations that are still running a hybrid infrastructure and our solutions cater for that. We've just briefly spoken about the machines and obviously passwords is the big elephant in the room. And through this IDAS solution, there are a lot easier ways of managing passwords and authentication and making sure that you can keep your infrastructure secure. We see identity as the foundation of an identity access management system. And through these events over the past years, there has been a real, real strong push from all organizations to go down this path. Now, when it comes to, to organizations, and I'll just grab on the next slide on this. There are really two components you need to cover for an authentication side. One is the workforce, and a lot of MSPs, of course, are working in that area in making sure that their customers can secure the systems and provide convenient access to those systems. There is also the other aspect that we as an organization cover, and that is the consumer side. So if you've got an app and you want to do banking services or energy services and interact with the backend system as a consumer, you also need to authenticate yourself. And this is uh, what our system can do as well. So our system can cover both sides of it, the workforce and the consumer side. To give you a bit of feel for the size of the system, so they are quite scalable. Our largest workforce customer has 800,000 employees globally. And from a consumer side, our largest customer, a South American bank, has approximately 10 million users. So the systems are quite scalable and will adapt to the needs. Just checking time, okay. Um, they're really, or the identity lifecycle can broadly be put into the three components. One is the onboarding component. Uh, where you basically map a physical identity and assign someone a digital identity. In this presentation, we won't be going into that in any great depth. We're assuming that all MSPs have onboarded their workforce through other means and that the workforce already resides in a digital directory, for example, in an active directory, and we interface to that. If someone wants some help with the onboarding part of it, we can do that. We've got multiple uh, options there to make sure that is seamless. We will be focusing on the second component, that is the use phase of the identity lifecycle. 
And that is basically authenticating the users, doing risk-based authentication and making sure they are who they say they are and trying to make that as secure as possible and at the same time as seamless as possible as to not inconvenience the users too much. We know that security and convenience don't necessarily go hand in hand, but there are options out there today that make it a lot easier. And this is my last slide before I hand over to Lou. And that is basically using a passwordless authentication method and then having a federated single sign-on and that as i said can be across on-prem or cloud so you only authenticate once to the system and depending on the risk that you're prepared to take you can keep that authentication across all sessions and give access to all instances that support the standardized interfaces that we're using for example a SAML interface or the OIDC uh, along with the FIDO. So the passwordless is really the way that we see the trends going at the moment. Some of the browsers uh, like the Google browsers and I think now also um, the Firefox uh, have adapted their systems to allow the FIDO based log on. Just a few numbers on some of our customers and having said that I'll hand over to Louis. Thank you. Okay. I'm guessing my screen is visible to everybody now. Willie, you can see my screen. Um, I'm just looking for it at the moment, to be honest. Yep, it's visible, Louis. Yep. Fantastic. Oh, thanks, thanks, everyone. Well, hello and, and welcome to uh, Intrust Identity uh, as a Service uh, webinar in conjunction with Software Solutions. I'm you know, really happy to be here and, and, and presenting today. Um, today we're going to be talking about Identity as a Service, you know, born in the cloud offer as a service. I've got a few slides that I want to go through um, so everyone gets a visual of, of what it's all about and what it looks like. So, you know, protecting, you know, Protecting the identities of workers, consumers, and citizens is, is pretty much the key to preventing you know, uncontrolled access, data breaches, maybe perhaps fraudulent transactions. Um, that's predominantly what it's all about. You know, the, the Entrust identity um, is pretty much the IAM portfolio that provides that strong foundation that you need to, to, to realize a, a zero trust framework if that's what you want to achieve. I guess to put simply, Identity as a Service, or you know, we'll call it IDAS for short, it's a cloud-based platform, which Julie touched on as well, and 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 it's it, it's used to to deliver those authentication services to your to your your, your workers, consumers, and citizens. <clears throat> I, I, I mean, IDAS enables you to uh, you know easily and efficiently, I guess, secure access to information for your users, um, provide multi-factor authentication to your users across multiple applications, you know, things such as Radius, um, uh, SAML, OpenID Connect, OAuth, and, and perhaps you've got some custom applications as well in-house so you can leverage um, APIs um, as a result. Um, you want to synchronize your users from you know, either your, your corporate directory, you know, AD, ADLDS, Azure AD, AWS, etc. Um, and you want to be able to manage your users and your authenticators. And that's just put simply, there's a lot more to it, but in, in its simplistic form, that's what we're looking at, right? And and what Entrust is trying to achieve in, in terms of their solution is to develop, to develop something um, with the aim to enhance productivity and eliminate, eliminating that redundant process and, and limiting user friction. 
to touch on to the next slide. So yes, yeah, so we, we move on to the, to the next slide in terms of you know the new world. You know, identity is it has to be part of this new world, and it's fun and it's that fundamental link between you know your users, your devices, and your applications. You know, and, and placing identity at that focal point of your strategy or your defense strategy um, should surely give you some secure results. You know, Impl implementing a mature identity and access management program. Um, we believe is now an absolute requirement you know, if you're going to adopt that identity-centric approach to, to your security. You know, the, the, the IDAS IAM solution, um, you know, offered as a service model, provides that multi-factor multi authentication, that high assurance password login, um, better rated single sign-on um, to access all your applications, you know, through that one credential. Um, you've got granular controls um, to set up to step up your authentication. You know, based on risk profiling, um, uh, the solution integrates well with applications, directories, and mobile platforms. And to top it all off, um, you 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 get all this from this one you know trusted um, uh, platform um, for simplified identity and uh, management and and of course reporting. Right, we can't forget reporting. Um, you know, the solution's built on a multi-tenant and multi-tier architecture, and that just provides that agility and that scalability and that, you know, high availability. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's truly, you know, a solution that's born in the cloud and, and offered as a service. Just some, some important things to note is um, that each customer um, will have their own private dedicated instance and data is encrypted to and from the cloud, all right? So, you know, you can provide a full production instance for, you know, proof of concepts and for demos um, with 30-day trial, and then you can convert that to production environments if, if and when required. Okay, so once again, you know, I may be repetitive in certain instances, but, you know, IDAS solutions built on a zero trust framework, okay? Um, and that implies you to never trust and always verify. So, you know, be, the solution pretty much evaluates the security of, of the user and the device um, from which the access is requested with, a, with the help of our adaptive risk engine. And I'll, I'll show you that in, in the live portal um, uh, as we move along. So user identity is verified by evaluating, you know, granular, granular checks like, you know, behavioral patterns, velocity of access attempts, um, there's geolocation, amongst other factors. So there's there's a fair few factors we can look at. Um, for device check, there is a device fingerprint, which is done in real time, and that, and that cap, you know, by capturing the biometrics of the user from the device. Um, there's also a device reputation, which um, offers that secure um, authentication by providing um, pro proactive security checks like device ID, um, device challenge intelligence, <clears throat> and evasion detections, amongst other other things um, prior to granting that access, right? After this analysis, the access um, can either be allowed or stepped up with the request of another authentication challenge if, if that's the way you want to configure it. Or if the risk is very high, it simply blocks the user altogether. Right? So all of these access controls can be predefined um, by the IT team. Right? And of course, you know, with that risk evaluation, it helps to secure access and authorization. Um, for your cloud and on-prem applications, uh, networks and, and data transmissions as a result. Right. Next slide. I just want to quickly just give you, a, I'm not, not going to spend too much time on this slide, just to give you a visual of what the architecture looks like. You know, you've got a gateway, um, enterprise service gateway that, that um, allows for that, you know, uh, secure access to your environment. You know, when you know communicating with AD, your radius, and, and any API-based um, internal um, related items. Um, obviously, you got your identity as a service up, up in the cloud, your users, um, and and you know your administration rest administration rest API and your your authentication um, rest uh, rest API um, for all your custom in-house applications that don't support you know, assemble or open ID connect. <clears throat> so the API pretty much, you know, allows you to seamlessly perform the necessary 
administration and authentication functions without even logging into the, uh, the actual portal itself. All right, so I, I briefly touched on the behavioural um, uh, side of things and the geolocation and the travel velocity, et cetera, down the bottom right. Um, also, the different types of um, authenticators that are available, as well as the auditing log that's available to it. So, we call this uh, a platform our IDAS, our intelligent platform. Um, you know, you got details about the number of users, you know, your entitlements, the applications that are protected, the directories in play for identity verification. Um, there's a wide range of authenticators to choose from, you know, ranging from your soft tokens, FIDO, two tokens, smart credentials, etc. And there's all this. That you can that you can visualise, um, that you can see in, in front of you. Um, I guess the risk-based uh, adaptive controls or RBAC, you know, for short, um, can all be also be set to prompt the user in case of any anomalies. So as you can see, we can set you know, down the bottom here. You can set um, uh, date, time, geolocation, IP address, device ID, etc. So when there are suspicious um, login attempts made which do not satisfy the set criteria that you've specified um, within IDAS, the authentication is either stepped up or, and the user has to verify themselves by using perhaps a different authenticator for argument's sake. Um, all the audit logs are maintained in a list format so that the identities, device in use and authentication attempts can easily be monitored as well. And I'll show you that a little bit later on, um, including applications and websites, into the platform can be done in a few steps from a graphical user interface. All right. So in, in, in summary, you pretty much got a risk policy engine that is defined by your IT admin, um, a slider that allows you to create risk-based policy to allow or deny threats, as you can see down the bottom here. Um, uh, so as part of that policy um, definition, the IT admin you know, you know, can also determine the, the course of action from a low risk, medium risk, and high risk as well. So, for example, low, medium, and high, you can perform certain certain steps to either deny access, keep a password, only allow certain factors, a second factor, etc. So that all, all can be all that can can be modified. One one of my favourites is the travel velocity. So. If, if you're if you're based in Melbourne and Lewis always logs in from Melbourne at nine o'clock every morning, all of a sudden Lewis is logged in. It's 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 nine o'clock and it's you know it, it then becomes nine o five and Lewis is trying to attempt to log in from from Queensland and obviously there's there's no way that Lewis will be able to travel from you know Melbourne to Queensland in five minutes. So obviously that's a prompt for for us to action. So a wide array of authentication options that we have. So um, uh, in terms of the consumer and more workforce authentication categories. So uh, whether you require a you know, hard token like a FIDO key or a grid card, or you, you want to use mobile-based authentication um, by using you know, soft tokens, uh, one-time passwords, push notifications, uh, we, we have it all. So um, beyond the regular, you know, your login and your password setup. Um, IDAS or Identity as a Service also offers passwordless options, which we'll look at um, uh, with the help of biometrics. So our premium offering um, called the uh, Higher Insurance Credential Credentials uses digital certificates, which is backed by a PKI. And combining those, combining PKI with passwordless authentication, it gives you that extra layer of security um, for, for securing um, your assets. There's also Google Authenticator. I don't think it's listed here, but you know we've pretty much got 19 plus um, authentication options for you uh, to look at. Single sign-on for the hybrid and multi-cloud. Okay, so I, I, IDAS offers single sign-on um, for hybrid and multi-cloud environments. Um, single sign-on enables users you know, to securely authenticate multiple applications and, and websites. Um, by you know, logging in only once and using one set of credentials. So the beauty of it lies um, in simplicity, right? So the service authenticates you once um, on one designated platform, and that enables you to use multiple apps without having to log in and out of each app every single time. Um, uh, we offer SSO for multiple applications and platforms um, that, that could be on-prem or in the cloud, 
um, and they use, you know, using federated SSO um, uh, with identity protocols, like I mentioned before, SAML, OIDC and OAuth 2.1. And there's also, you know, the legacy applications that don't integrate um, with user directory um, can be the, you know, that link that causes SSO um, implementation to fail. So this is um, this is where that um, access uh, where access gateways can help, right? They integrate with your on-prem web apps and private networks with cloud-based SSO solution for providing that you know unified ac unified access. Um, I will quickly jump to the next slide and just just show you a quick um, demo, simple demo of, of a single sign-on, you know. Here we, here we have you know, the user going across to the, the office website, logging in, it's redirected to our IDES, the user enters the user ID, there's, a, there's a, um, a, an interest mobile soft token push notification, biometrics are used, we're fetching that, we confirm it, and that should give us a bit of information about what's happening and that provides the access for us right away. So the second option here, there's another way you can actually access um, the Office 365 and that's by directly logging into your, what we call self-service or profile um, within IDAS. You log into your profile, um, same method, you, know, you receive a push notification, biometric fingerprint, will allow for the next step. And here's a list of all the applications that are available to you. You click on Microsoft Office um, and then that will redirect you and, get, and that get, that'll give you access to um, all your applications. Which brings me on to passwordless. So passwordless pretty much provides an alternative form of authentication, um, you know, so biometrics, facial recognition, et cetera. Um, to the password and you know to give you that secure access, right? Um, so why passwordless? You know, passwords historically have been you know, one of the largest causes of cyber attack. You know, having weak passwords that can be easily compromised. You know, through attacks like brute force, social engineering, um, passwords fray, etc. Um, strong passwords inc increase that um, complexity by being long and random, and that leads to them being forgotten. And you know, still leaving you you're susceptible susceptible to attacks such as phishing. Um, on the other hand, passwordless user authentication not only you know, gets rid of or eliminates the password, it includes features like proximity detection, which eliminates threats like remote based attacks, while also improving the user experience. Um, other benefits um, include stronger security. You know, better user experience, re reduced uh, total cost, cost of ownership. Um, and unlike other solutions, our entrust passwordless is uh, truly passwordless, so it really does remove the password altogether and enables users you know, to send signed and encrypted emails as well, and digitally signed documents and encrypt files with a PKI-based credential, right? Um, there are no servers to manage or software to deploy. Simply use our cloud service to establish your policies and monitor activity on the networks. Look, so enough talking. Let me move on to the next slide so at least you, you get a visual. So once again, you've got those high assurance credentials that are based on digital certificates, which, which is backed by PKI, and that provides that cryptographic assurance. So combining those credentials with passwordless, you know, provides users with highly secure um, and seamless authentication experience, right? So a smart, pretty much how it works is a smart credential gets installed on, on the mobile device and resides on a, uh, your or our mobile smart credential app, I should say. So when the user walk, walks towards a workstation, um, due to Bluetooth or, or near field communication or NFC capabilities, um, which is encrypted, um, a connection is established between the mobile where the smart credential resides and the desktop, right? Um, there are a few options or um, to passwordlessly logging uh, logging in from there. Either the system gets uh, unlocked when the user provides their fingerprint or face ID on the smartphone, or for other scenarios, the user can also opt to enter a PIN on, on the desktop to log in. 
So the, the passwordless solution also comes with SSO capabilities and, and the user can once again seamlessly access any web-based application by using you know, federated identity pro protocols like SAML and, and, and OpenID uh, Connect. Okay, let's have a quick um, demo of what this looks like. Hit play. So here we go, we've got a, a digital credential that's been provisioned to the mobile device. You know, the worker unlocks the device with biometric authentication, such as fingerprint, facial recognition. Once the worker is authenticated, it's closer to the machine. It delivers a password signal sign on to all the apps. There we go. Here's the fingerprint. Provides you the access. Single sign on is, is activated, so you've got access to all that that's required. Then when the walker walks away from the computer, he or she is logged out and the workstation is locked, you know, depending on the policies that, that that's set. Okay, so I just want to quickly touch on identity proofing. So identity proofing is pretty much used to validate the identity of a person and it performs a, a, a liveness check using um, government issue identity documents such as your, such as driver's license, passport, um, and comparing, excuse me, comparing the document photograph with a self-portrait or, you know, or a digital selfie or arguments that's taken on, on the mobile device. So the identity proofing uses a fingerprint of the mobile device to check its reputation and determine uh, whether, whether it's trusted. So to enable, but just note that to enable identity proofing, you must have a tenant account with identity uh, with identity um, proofing in, in entitlements. Okay, so it's a byproduct of our IDAS uh, solution. Um, so the solution forms the identity in real time. So you're actually directly accessing a repository of like 6,000 uh, from memory plus government IDs um, or ID types, I should say, including passports, visas, and driver's license, which I just mentioned. Um, so that's I probably won't touch too much into that. I don't want to eat too, uh, into our time too much. Um, uh, so yeah, just an important thing to note, you know, in a typical use case for identity proofing, um, which uh, it could be something like a, a bank, where they want to, you know, they want customers to open accounts, you know, maybe, you know customer onboarding, maybe it's employee onboarding, um, could be online and mobile banking, could be a loyalty program or registration, etc. So there are several use cases um, from the identity perspective. All right, I thought it would be important um, to mention about tool, our tools, services, engagement, and qualification. You know, it's fine for us to jump on and, and have a chat and, and show you what their offering is. But you know, as an MSP or as a provider or as a reseller, at what sort of tools and services and, and, and information? Can we provide you? You know, you know how do, and, and first of all, we look at how does Entrust differentiate differentiate itself, right? It's got the most extensive breadth of authenticators and use cases. You know, we've talked about credential-based authentication, a truly passwordless solution that includes SSO. You know, it's high assurance because it's um, using PKI plus MFA plus that single sign-on. You've got your non-repudiation. You're using most most individuals and most people use you know mobile phones and you've got that strength in mobile um, device reputation as well that we we look at you know, for, for example if a mobile phone um, has been rooted and you you know we want to block that you know it's not um, we we can do so you know it's FIDO2 compliant you've got adaptive you know authentication which we've looked at you know your travel velocity your geolocation your date time um, etc. You know, applying these granular policy definition can, you know, uh, really, you know, strengthen your security um, within your environment, and you can set it based on what your your, your compliance um, requirements are for for your organisation. You know, you've got ID proofing and device reputation, which I've mentioned and shown you a little bit about. 
Um, you got extended use cases for file encryption and document signing. You know, and, and you got a wide portfolio of solution and, and offerings, you know, flexible deployment models, cloud, on-prem, virtual appliance, uh, appliance. You know, we, you know, we look at both Windows and, and Mac OS, you know, flexible pricing options, um, which um, we'll, we'll touch on a little bit later on. I think Drew will go through that. Um, and we've got a trusted care portal, which you know you get you get access to that provides product patches, um, guides and integration, um, and, and support with the service level uh, agreements in place. Um, one th important thing to note is that we also offer professional services. So if you're not really au fait before this, and your customers aren't really au fait with this, um, then maybe they want some advisory or consulting services on their architecture. Maybe you know they, they love what they hear about IDEX or identity as a service, and they want some installation and configuration, deployment and integration. Um, we, we can provide all those for you as well, uh, for soft, soft solutions. Um, review the services, perhaps it's a, it's a health check. You, know, you, get, you get a technical account manager as a result, um, and you, know, you get support services um, with trained travel partners, you know, input um, and review of their documents and deployments and testing plans, and remote, re remote deployment support and troubleshooting if so required. Okay, I'll just quickly go through those. Now, um, you've got resources in regions that work with you. You've got a technical sales consultant like myself and, um, and, and others, sales executive professional services, which I've just mentioned. Um, you get access to an online partner central environment, which has sales kits, marketing and collateral information, um, case studies and training. So there's lots, lots, that's lots in there to, to look at. And also we've got some questionnaires and templates, you know, pre-sales qualifying questions um, that, that you can you can ask uh, um, when when trying to qualify um, your your customers. I think I've, I've jumped and then to learn more, you know, I've, I've provided a list of information that for you guys to look at, you know, in terms of device reputation, identity, password list, etc. So you can have a look at those in your own time, which I won't delve into too deeply. And you've also get some um, access to you know the customer engagement and qualification, which is probably a very important thing um, um, in, in most cases. You know, you know what, what questions do I ask? I mean, what, what is it that the customer needs to protect? What sort of authentication methods does, does, does the customer need? Do they want a cloud um, or on-premise um, scenario? Or um, I mean, all these questions, and this all helps you to identify um, the, the customer's requirements, you know, when we're looking at authentication methods, when we're looking at authenticators, um, you know, what sort of applications or things they need to secure, you know, and, and most importantly, you know, whether it's cloud on-prem. So, you know, this is a good good little slide to assist you when, when talking to your customers and knowing what questions to ask. I guess the, tea, the, the key takeaway from, from the slideshow I just presented today um, is to, to embrace you know yourselves and your customers to embrace zero trust. You know, trying to keep that user friction low. You know, for example, that passwordless solution. Um, you know, be mobile centric if you can. You know, realize you know the one source of truth. You know, go cloud first. Take an ecosystem approach. Um, but I guess that's that's probably predominantly what um, we need to look at. So I've finished with the slides. Now I'll log in to the actual portal um, and so we can take a look at what it looks like. I'll just quickly log in if you bear with me. Okay, I'll just drag that across. Okay, so here we have the um, uh, IDAS portal. Okay, so when you first log in, um, we did see a screenshot of this, but you, you, you've got some information that's available to you right right off the bat. You know, your users. You, know, you can click click on the users. Or get a bit, obviously, it's going to give you a list of users that are available available to you here. Um, you, you've got some options if if you know the administrator, for argument's sake, um, has gone rogue. 
Um, and we want to revoke the access really quickly. You know, you can revoke all tokens, you can delete the, the user, etc. Um, but obviously, it provides information that, that's that's necessary of all the users and that are available. If I want if I want to add a user, I can create a local user, or I can sync from a from a from a directory. Okay, if required. I'll quickly jump onto the next screen. So entitlements, this just gives you a list of the, the, the contract mode and the user entitlements that's applicable to this IDAS instance. You know, things like uh, you know, a lot of tenants, how many users have got left, start and end dates, the bundle type, etc. Uh, the applications um, that's uh, available, so that are in use for this particular instance. So as you can see, we've got a couple of Microsoft Office 365 and some Salesforce um, that, that's, that's been enabled. But essentially, if, if I want to add some applications, I'll quickly quickly click on the plus button and I can select an application template. So here we have a list of all our SAML cloud integrations that are available right, right out of the box. And you can see some you know, familiar familiar names in there, AWS, ADP, um, Microsoft Office, Salesforce, etc. So we've pretty much got all bases covered and if not, you can let us know and, and we, we can we can assist you with that and maybe add something. But if if you if if you like you can also add a generic SAML application uh, as an addition as part of that um, application add. The Open ID Connect Open ID Connect and OAuth cloud integrations that are available to you are here as well. And once again, we've got the, the generic options for you um, uh, to, to be able to add as part of that IDAS um, application solution. You know, list of Radius and VPN integrations, you guys, some familiar names like Checkpoint F5, Palo Alto, et cetera. And once again, we offer that generic instance. We've got identity as a service integrations that are available here for, for for those systems that have direct access to the internet, inclusive of the administration API and authentic, authentication API. If you remember back to that architecture slide, I, I, I spoke about authentication API and admin API, and you know legacy integrations that require a, a, a gateway in order to access are listed here as well. Okay, so there are all the options here for you. Okay, so I'll go back home. Um, you've got directories in here, so we've got a few directories that have been um, that have been set up. Uh, we, can, we can click on it and it will provide information about the connection settings, search bases, synchronization, etc. I'll go back to the direct directory list, but it's just a matter of maybe clicking the plus sign, you know, and adding adding the relevant directories: Active Directory, LDAP, Azure AD, AD Connected Directory. Okay. We're not going to set those up now because they do take a little bit of time. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of showing you um, uh, what it's like and the look and feel of the IDAS um, portal. Gateways, here we have a list of gateways as well you know, that, that, are, that have been registered and are, and are available. You know, you've got the AD connector, micro, maybe it's a Microsoft CA pro proxy that you wish to, to connect to, um, uh, you can do so. And your identity as a service uh, gateway option that's available to you as well. So I, I can click on, on, on that and, and download it and, and install it um, um, quite easily and, and quickly and some documentation that we provide there as part of it. Quickly back home. Here's a list of authenticators that have that we have available to us, you know, and, and how the uses of each from each of the users. Okay. Um, we've got an audit log. Um, so if I double click on, on, on one of these, it'll give me specific information about the audit, audit events that, are, that, have, that have occurred. Um, for example, you know, the second step, the interest push notification, hardware token, smart credential, part of So these are all the tokens that are available to me for, for, for second step authentication. Um, gives you latitude, longitude, IP address, et cetera. So as you can see, it all, it's an audit of all the information that have happened in the form of an authentication and or management log if, that, if, if you want some management um, uh, log information. Right. And just quickly, I want to make sure, click on the hamburger. The My, the my Profile is, if I click on My Profile, um, essentially this is the, the Lewis user that's logged in 
and the Lewis user can log into his own profile via a URL and he can access the AWS application or the Microsoft Office, Office 365 or the Salesforce because that's what he has available to him as a user. His authenticators are listed as such. You now he's got an active soft token, one-time password and password. He can add additional tokens, um, et cetera. So I, I can do this all via a self-service mechanism. So this is my self-service. I can come in here, you know, change my password, et cetera. So I, I can control all that. Um, devices, profile information, um, any, and any tenants that's, uh, uh, that Lewis is a part of. So that's all specific to the Lewis user. Quickly jump on to read before we run out of time. I'm going to say we have shorter time. Um, resource rules. This is what I really wanted to, to, to touch on as well. So this is a set of resource rules um, that I wanted to look at, which we showed you the screenshot of. So I can double click on this now and just quickly um, add the relevant groups that I want to assign this resource rule to. Or if I leave it blank, I want to assign it to all the users that are uh, um, available on, on this portal. And if you remember, if you remember that um, screenshot that I showed you, here's the, um, the travel velocity that I spoke about. So I can adjust the travel velocity of, um, based on on the level of um, risk that I think. So if I want 100, you know, 100 percent um, travel velocity, and that's all I'm concerned about, I'll I'll, I'll slide that across to 100 percent. I can use date and time. So the ones that I can click on um, are, are in. Uh, Purple, I, could say, I should say, I'm a little bit colorblind, um, but I can click on date and time and I can specify certain criteria like deny date and time, um, specify a date range, maybe I only want to allow certain uh, time zones, etc. and when this starts and when this ends. So I can control all these factors and assign a level of risk based on that authentication um, decision. Um, so with that note, you know, for example, I can skip the password for the first low risk of a zero and 20%, um, uh, and I can allow any of these options um, in terms of um, second factor fallback, or I can, you know, get rid of all these if I, if I want, um, or add just one or add three, et cetera. So you can control all that and, and what the user has, what um, authentication option the user has. Maybe the second, Fact that I want to enable the password and only have a grid card, and maybe you know high risk if it's between 50 and 100%. I want to just completely deny access. So you can control all this based based on those RBAC um, RBAC rules uh, within this portal. And lastly, before we run out of time, I'll just click on customization. So if you want to give if you want to give the iDash portal the look and feel. Of, uh, of your your own logo and own colours, you can update the logo and set a custom logo for the account. All right, so it doesn't have to be Entrust Identity as a service. Uh, it could be you know it could be um, uh, soft soft solutions, um, etc. You can change your colouring, um, and and you can provide a message of the day or some relevant information. You can also change the language if if you need to change the language if it's for um, overseas customers. Um, yeah, so you've got plenty of options there. Due to time, I probably I probably should end it there um, to allow Drew to have a, a quick um, uh, chat if we can. So Drew, over to, over to you. No problem. Thanks, Louis. Um, anyone got any questions? Okay, somebody have asked me what is gateway and is it necessary? The gateway um, is used for certain functionality. Um, uh, for example, if if you want to, it uses um, the integration for perhaps uh, Azure AD, um, uh, perhaps for uh, AWS, um, a gateway is pretty much used um, in certain use cases, um, uh, to transfer users, um, in, in particular, uh, and maybe to to connect um, uh, 
to our PKI based uh, solution for that credential based authentication um, also. We have a list of uh, technical integration guides that are available um, when it comes time to install a gateway if, if and when required. Um, and it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on, on how to install that gateway um, within, within your environment. Mm. Cool, yeah, cool. And um, Kevin have texted us, could you send us some documentation around setting up mobile proximity passwordless login? Yes, we, we can We can definitely do that. Um, I, I will send you um, uh, some specific information and, and, and some guides. Um, to, to help you with that, um, uh, it, it's it's not a five minute process. Hence why I couldn't really show you today. Um, but I'll send you that information. Yeah, that's that's not a problem at all. We can do that uh, uh, once we get off the chat. Yeah. Cool. And Ian is asking uh, NFR or demo. Yes, Ian, we'll we'll get you some <laughs> demo trial licenses so that you can try it out. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, we can we can. If we set that up. And Ian, I'm not sure what you mean by soft session based training locally. Uh, if if you if you want like any any pre sales support, yes, we'll be able to assist you with that locally. Any more question, guys? All right, I guess. Um, if you've got any more questions, you don't have to ask uh, all of them today. <laughs> you know, you can you can you can um, click us an email, call us, text us, uh, you know, reach out on LinkedIn. Whatever is easier, you know, just feel free to reach out, and then uh, we'll be able to assist you. Thank you, everyone, again for your time today, and uh, looking forward to speaking with you very soon. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Drew. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.